Are you looking for an astonishing 124 scale figure to add some excitement to your large scale Gasland dioramas? Look no further than Masterbox's Natey from their At the Edge of the Universe figure sets. Natey is part of the At the Edge of the Universe Strange Company Adventures series, Episode 4, We Beat Them. This is Masterbox models number MB24072 and is molded in 125th scale. On the back of the box, we can read up on Natty's backstory, as well as take a look at this nice QR code, which will get you right over to the Masterbox website. On the back of the box, we have this wonderful paint color callout chart, which includes paints from companies like Vallejo, Life Color, Tamiya, Master Color, and Ammo. Ammo, of course, being part of the MIG paint series. And here is Vallejo as well. So here we have six paint colors represented by letters. C, D, F, G, H, and I. And here are all the numbers for the different paint companies so that you can match them up with your favorite brand. Down below, we also see the series of figures in these sets. And here is Natey at the very end. In the instructions, we get a brief write-up of what this model is supposed to represent. It says this kit is part of the series called Strange Company Space Adventures and is part of the general composition consisting of 12 kits. Then it lists the numbers. This kit is episode 4, Ianis, and his two daring assistants, Valerie and Natey, had a rather adventurous life taking part in fights of robots until destiny brought them together with Helen Parsons. It made them outlaws, and now they are hunted by the most powerful enemy in the whole universe, the Galactic Security Service. Here we have the instruction sheet for Natey, and this is the parts tree. So what we have here is part one, which is her back torso, and then part two, which is the front torso, part three being one of her legs, and part four being her head itself. And then part five, we have the goggles. Part six is the opposite leg. Part seven is a little pouch, which goes right here. Part eight is her arm. And then part 9 and 10, these are the tool belts which go on the side of Natey. And then part 11 is her cyborg arm holding the wrench over here. Now looking at the completed model, we have the back and the front. And we also have the paint color callouts all across the model. And these will help you build and paint it into a beautiful work of art. Here we have the parts tree for Nady, which is just molded in one strip, as you can see here. So we have her head, her goggles, a little tool pouch which goes into her back. We also have her right and left hand legs. And then we have her arm and her cyborg arm, as well as these tool belt pouches, her torso front and torso back. So let's just bring this up into the camera where we can see the detail a lot crisper. So there you can see the robotic spinal cord going up here into her arm, which would be this one here holding a wrench. We also have this nice tool belt, belt pouches, as well as her arm and the front half of her torso here. And then moving into her legs, you can see again, it's really nicely done. And we also have her face here. A lot of this looks pretty silhouetted. So let's just bring a light down. There we go. Now you can see more of that detail on there. Again, really nice work, nice molding. We also have that there's very slight seam lines on here, which makes cleanup relatively easy and straightforward. Here we have Natey all built up according to the instruction sheet, and the seam lines are pretty much invisible onto the model. There are only two that actually are quite visible, and they run up inside under her shoulder here and uh, on the other side as well. So those I'm going to try to fill with some Tamiya Grey Putty. It may be a little bit challenging since I've got all the arms glued on and everything, but overall it should not be too bad. Nady can stand up on her own two feet, which is really nice, and adds a bit of stability into the figure. Here we have Nady after applying some flat black primer. 
I also spray painted some white paint using an airbrush from the top down and this will help in the highlights of the colors so that where the light is it is brighter and where the shadow is it will be darker. Now that the primer coats have dried on Natey, we're going to paint her flesh, and I choose to use the Games Workshop Citadel paints, which are acrylic base paint and dry pretty quickly. What we're going to do first is put on a base coat of rat skin flesh onto all the exposed skin areas, followed by a Reichland flesh shade, and this will go into all the crevices and cracks just to bring the tone down in those areas and make it look a little deeper. Then we add our first layer of Bestigore Flesh, which will just go over top as a dry brush type of effect. And then Ungore Flesh being dry brushed from the top down. And finally Eldar Flesh on the very high points, like on the bridge of her nose and so on. Here we have our bottle of rat skin flesh and our paintbrush. I'm going to just prime the paintbrush in a little bit of water before I use it here. And uh, my rat skin flesh is sort of turning lumpy. So I'm just going to try to smooth it out down here a little with a bit of water and make it into a substance that will flow nicely. And then we can begin painting. So we can start here, I guess, right up on our shoulder. I'll bring this up to the camera a little better. We're just applying a simple base coat. And I will continue this on the model and we'll get into the Reichland Flesh Shade. Here we have Nady after applying the base coat of Rat Skin Flesh. And you can see just how much it has changed and brightened up the figure, even though this is just a base coat. The next step is to apply the Reichland Flesh Shade over her skin tones and that will provide the darker element. The nice thing about the Reichland Flesh Shade is it is already in a watery consistency because of the way it's designed to flow into cracks and crevices. So you don't really need to water it down at all, and just applying it over top will result in quite a bit of difference, as we can see here on her face, with all the different, uh, different bits of the shade going into those little areas. Once the Reichland Flesh Shade has dried, we can really see how much this has darkened up Nathie's complexion. Now we can bring that all back up with the Bestigore Flesh, which will be our first layer paint. Here we have our Bestigore Flesh, and I have this type of brush this time around, as well as a paper towel off to the side. What you want to do is just get a bit of this here on the ends of your brush, like that. Then take your paper towel and wipe it down just a little bit. And this will start to give us our dry brush effect. So what we want to do oops, is try to get, get as much off the brush as you can, and then we'll just wipe this down here. And now as you can see this is starting to bring the color back up into her arm while also leaving enough of the dark tone just around the edge. Now we do this all over and then we'll take a look at it. So here we have Natey after applying the Bestigore Flesh and as you can see she is starting to brighten up quite a bit. Next we need to add in the Ungore Flesh and that would be from the top down, not going back up but top down because that's where the light is going to be coming from overhead and that'll be the brightest areas. Now we're going to add the Ungore Flesh to our stiff bristle brush just like so and then we are going to wipe that off on our paper towel and we will try to get as much of the paint out as possible just so that there's just enough here to trail and pick up the details and then we will start from the top down. So here we go just a bit into there. Now you can see it's picking up on the bridge of her nose and down her face just a bit. 
Remember, you want to get as much of this off the brush you can. You're not painting on a new color. You're just highlighting it, much like on her shoulder. Here is Natie with the Ungore Flesh applied, and you can see it is now lighter on the high points and darker on the lower points. Again, it turns out pretty nice once you take a look at it. The only thing is right now it does look a little bit odd because all you can see is this flesh-colored paint everywhere, and it is quite creepy actually. But once we get all the things in, like these uh, leather belts and tops and the mechanical arm painted up and the hair and all the rest, it will look quite normal and really good. As a final highlight, I was going to use Eldar Flesh on Nady, but the issue is that my Eldar Flesh has dried up and turned into a rock. So what I'm going to do is mix some of the Ungor Flesh with White Scar and bring it up to the brightness of the Eldar Flesh, and then I'll apply it to the very top edges of Nady. So here is the color that I mixed up, and now I can just apply a bit. Just like that. Right up on the highlights. And then that should start to brighten her up. Next up, I want to give Nadia that wonderful fiery red hair like she has here in the illustration by Victor Peatlin. And in order to do that, I'm going to use Jokero Orange, followed by Reichlin Flesh Shade, followed by Troll Slayer Orange, and finalized with Fire Dragon Bright. These are all Games Workshop Citadel colors again, and it should make for a really nice hairdo. Here we have Nady with the addition of the red hair, and I did take it through all the steps. They're basically the same. It goes base coat, a shade, layer one, layer two, and even a highlight. You can see just how nice this looks. I also added in white eyes and uh, green eyes and the white teeth, and I did this because I just needed to look at an actual face and not, you know, this really scary looking uh, contrast of all these different flesh tones. But as you can see, she is starting to look really nice here. So next up, we need to uh, paint the clothes on here, the leather, and uh, that should look pretty good. Now to capture the look of Nady's leather gear, I'm going to use the following colors. Dryad Bark, Agrath Earthshade for the shade tone, Gothar Brown for layer one, followed by Bane Blade Brown for the layer number two. This will give more of a dusty kind of gray brown to the leather instead of an actual leatherette kind of color. Here we have Nady after we painted on all the leather pieces on her outfit. And next up, we're gonna be doing her bionic arm and the spine bone behind her. What we're gonna use is the Citadel base of Lead Belcher, followed by Nuln Oil, Iron Breaker, and then Rune Fang Steel as our second two layers. Now, in case you're wondering, her little bikini bottom here is painted on using the Old Model Master Metallic Purple. I thought it would be nice to give her a different color. The little black lenses and the pupils of her eye are painted with Tester's Semi-Gloss Black. And then I added in some brass up here using a Vallejo paint. This one is called Old Gold, and it looks pretty much like brass, or bronze, or whatever. And that's an alcohol-based paint, so you need your alcohol, like you're ordering alcohol, to clean your brushes. Here we have Nady after all the paint has been applied. I added a little bit of rouge to her lips and to her cheeks, and then I also added in all that silver paint. And I used some chrome paint from a Molotol paint pen, as well as different colors of testers, gloss enamels for the tools. So overall, I think she ended up looking pretty good.
We hope you enjoyed this episode where we got to paint up Natey and I got to show you just what a cool looking model kit this really is. In future videos, we'll be taking a look at our Gaslands car, a 1964 Chevrolet Impala dressed to kill. So until next time, everybody, happy model building and remember to keep your wheels on the road. Thank you.